Hello everyone. In this video, I explain latent growth curve models. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, typically related to multivariate statistical methods and often involving the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free statistics newsletter that comes every week and other free videos as well as workshops. So in this video here, I will talk about latent growth curve models and explain the basics in particular of a linear growth curve model. When would you use latent growth curve models? Latent growth curve models are applied to analyze longitudinal data. So when you have repeated measures data and you want to find out whether people changed across time, then one option is to apply latent growth curve models. What is the advantage of these models? One advantage is that the models are estimated within the framework of confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling. And so these models allow you to correct for errors of measurement because they fit latent variables that represent changes over time and separate true inter-individual differences in change over time from random measurement error. So I'm going to show you an example now of a linear growth curve model. And so first of all, in a linear growth curve model, we have observed variables or indicators, as we say. So this would be our measured variables. Let's say, for example, we would be, we might be interested in changes in life satisfaction across time. And so then this variable y might represent our repeatedly observed or repeatedly measured life satisfaction score, for example, based on a self-report questionnaire. So y1, y2, y3, and y4 represent the same variable measured at four different time points. Here in this example, to keep matters simple, I'm assuming that the distances between um, the neighboring time points are always the same. So for example, the temporal distance between y1 and y2, those measurements would be the same as the distance between the measurement of y2 and y3 and between y3 and y4. Now, this is not a necessary condition for latent growth curve models. You can also fit them when you have unequally spaced time points, but in that situation, then the specification becomes a little bit more complicated, particularly uh, when different individuals have different uh, spacing between the time points. And I'll um, revisit this issue a little bit later when we talk about the growth factors. So what happens now in the growth curve model? So how do we, what kind of model do we fit to measure change over time or reflect changes over time? First of all, there's a so-called intercept factor. So this is a latent variable, a latent factor as you would have it in regular confirmatory factor analysis. But in this case, this factor has a specific meaning as a so-called random intercept factor, or we could also say this is a factor that represents inter-individual differences in the initial status or the time one uh, or whatever time point you set as the intercept, so say time point um, value. So the intercept factor represents in this case, in my model here, inter-individual differences at the onset, so at time one. And so how can we make this an intercept factor? With this meaning, it becomes an intercept factor by fixing all the loadings to one. So each variable loads with a loading of 1.0 on the intercept factor. So these loadings are not freely estimated as in conventional confirmatory factor analysis, where we often estimate most of the loadings freely. Here in this case, in, in contrast, all the loadings are a priori fixed to 1.0, and that's what makes this factor an intercept factor. Furthermore, we also have a so-called slope factor, and in a linear growth curve model, the slope factor has loadings fixed to one, two, three, four, five, and so on, when you have equally spaced time points. 
notice that the first variable for the first time point y1 does not load on the slope factor because no change has taken place yet when we have um, uh, time one. So in at time one, to the time one variable is only influenced by the intercept factor. And in fact, this is another important component for making sure that the intercept factor really is an intercept factor because this happens due to the fact that the intercept factor is only measured by y1 um, or that y1 is not measuring any other factor, I should say, and only the intercept factor. And therefore, this is the represents the true score variable of the first time point and that what that's what makes this the intercept factor the slope factor here is a linear slope factor because the loadings are fixed in this way where the impact of the slope factor is one for y2 so one times change so to say you could think of this as being a latent difference score variable or latent change score variable that represents linear change across time and so that linear change has an impact of one on the second time point because here change so say has taken place once between time one and time two and so therefore this loading needs to be fixed to one and then the second loading on the slope factor which is for y3 is set to 2 because at that point change has taken place twice so once going from y1 to y2 and then second going from y2 to y3 and so therefore the impact of the slope factor now is 2 because it's a linear factor and so we have for example a linear increase so the so in order to keep it a straight line it has to be double the effect of um, what the effect is on y2 assuming again that the spacing between time points is the same and then for time 4 the impact is 3 because there are three so to say occasions now where change has taken place now if you don't have equally spaced time points then you can fix the loadings accordingly differently so to say so for example if the distance between y3 and y4 were double what it is between y2 and y3 so then you would simply fix this loading here to 4 instead of fixing it to 3 yeah so if you have a bigger distance here between time points so to make sure that the slope factor still represents linear growth also for a linear growth model it is not mandatory to fix all the loadings on the slope factor you can also estimate a free so to say growth model where you leave the growth curve unspecified or where you uh, leave it to the data to determine the shape of change over time if you for example set the second loading which is here fixed to two if you set this free and the th the third loading if you also set that free then those could be estimated as free parameters and then the slope factor would be no would no longer be a linear factor potentially and you could see what those loadings are like when you estimate them freely but in this case we want a linear growth model and so if we want a linear growth model then we have to keep all those loadings fixed in the correct order so to say Furthermore, the intercept and slope factors can be correlated. So the initial status can be correlated with change over time. For example, individuals with higher scores might change less than individuals with lower scores because individuals with higher scores often have um, already, so to say, are at the ceiling and they have less opportunity to grow. And so then um, oftentimes we find a negative relationship between intercept and slope, but there need not be a negative relationship. It could also be zero or it could be positive if, for example, those individuals who already have higher life satisfaction then increase their life satisfaction more than individuals with lower life satisfaction initially, then the correlation could also be positive. So this can be estimated also as a free parameter. And then finally, we have measurement error variables. Here, um, 
indicated as epsilon 1 through epsilon 4. Those are the variables that represent measurement error across time as well as potentially time-specific influences or situation-specific influences that um, are specific to a, a particular time point or event that happened at that um, time point. Now in this model you can see that a lot of parameters are fixed so um, specifically all the loadings are fixed for linear growth so none of the factor loadings are estimated and that's to say a special case of a factor analysis model oftentimes in factor analysis we estimate factor loadings in this case we don't we keep them all fixed to ensure that those factors have the exact meaning that we want them to have but we estimate other parameters and in particular we estimate the mean and variance of the intercept factor as well as the mean and variance of the slope factor so those are random effects random factors where the mean indicates the average starting point the mean intercept the mean slope indicates the mean growth rate and so you can then come up with the average linear growth curve based on the intercept factor mean and the slope factor mean and also we estimate the variance of the intercept which tells us about inter-individual differences in the true initial status so the true score variance so say at time one is the variance of the intercept and also the variance of the slope is estimated which indicates inter-individual differences in linear change over time. So this means that different individuals can change at different rates. So there can be ones that show a steep increase in life satisfaction. There could be ones that show no increase at all in life satisfaction. So they would have a slope um, score, slope factor score of zero. There could also be ones with a negative slope where their life satisfaction declines over time. So there's no requirement that um, uh, growth is the same for all individuals in terms of the slope or intercept. They can start at different points and they can grow at different rates. Some can increase, some can decline, some may not change at all. And so all this is permitted because this is a random effects model where both the intercept and slope factor have a variance that is estimated as a free model parameter. And I already told you also that the covariance is estimated between the intercept and slope and in the standardized solution this covariance would be equal to a correlation. So you can then look at whether the true individual status is correlated with the rate of change over time. In summary we can um, write this model also in terms of a regression equation or measurement equation for the observed variable. So this is so say a longitudinal measurement model that can be described by this equation which says that yt, so a variable at time t, is equal to an intercept uh, factor plus t minus 1 times a slope factor plus epsilon t. So the t minus 1 here refers to the loading on the slope factor where um, t starts at 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so then um, the slope factor loading for time 1 is 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0. So the slope factor drops out for y1 but then it stays in the equation for all other time points. For example, for y2, you would have y2 is equal to intercept plus um, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 times the slope factor plus epsilon 2. So this equation can be used to describe this model in just one line um, of, or uh, in a one line equation. Now this model can be estimated in programs for structural equation modeling such as M plus or Lavan or Amos. Any program that can handle confirmatory factor analysis can be used to fit this model because it just simply represents a special case of a confirmatory factor analysis model and so any program that's able to um, fit those types of models can be used for latent growth curve modeling. Another way to fit a model like this is by means of multi-level modeling. So any program that is capable of handling multi-level or hierarchical data where you have 
a nested data structure could also be used if you put your data into long format. So here we have, we are analyzing the data in white format, which means that each um, variable is a separate column. So here you would have four columns, one for each time point to represent these variables. And these data could be transformed into long format where Y is just simply one column for all time points. And then you could use multi-level modeling, AKA hierarchical linear modeling to fit the same equation, the same model as a random coefficient regression model in the multi-level modeling framework. And that could be done, for example, even in programs like SPSS, which have capabilities for multi-level modeling or any other program that does multi-level models such as HLM or also M plus or an R function that um, allows you to handle these types of models. And it's the exact same model. So say it's the same, you get the same parameter estimates. If you use, for example, maximum likelihood estimation, then um, the parameter estimates would be the same, whether you fit it as a factor model or as a multi-level model, you would get the same results. Also, you can insert additional variables into the equation, into the models so you could have, for example, um, you could have predictors at level one. So at the time specific level, if you have time varying predictors, those could be inserted. If you have predictors at the level of the uh, growth factor, so at uh, level two, the person level, you could also then have um, predictor variables such as, for example, age and gender. So non-time varying predictors can also be inserted here as um, into, in this case, into the structural model. So you could have additional equations for the intercept and or for the slope factor in which you predict those factors by external variables or by other factors and so on. So there are plenty of opportunities for extending this model. Also, this model could be estimated as a mixture distribution model, for example, where you extract different um, classes, so-called uh, growth mixture models, where you find or you try to find different classes that differ qualitatively in their pattern of growth across time. And I also have uh, videos on this channel that discuss growth mixture models. Other extensions are there or could be um, fitting these models as multi-group models and or fitting these models with multiple indicators at each time point. And then so say having so-called second order growth curve models and you find some of those also on this channel. I have a whole playlist on latent growth curve models in which I demonstrate different versions as well as their application in the M plus software. So you can check that out as well. I hope you liked this introductory video on linear growth curve models. If you did, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. And don't forget to check out the description for additional resources. You can also leave a comment in the comment section and I, I'll see you next week.